Were you around in 1945? If you were, you might have heard of Dorothy Trost. Otherwise, you probably haven't. Come with me and I'll show you how I break my artist's block and what it's got to do with Dolphy Tross. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. I have a huge box on my desk here. You can't see all of it because it's too big to fit into my camera shot. Um, but what I'm gonna do is open this. This is a, as you can see, heavy duty studio porcelain paint palette and it's from Meiden, who kindly sent it to me all the way from China, um, because I said I'd like to try it out. So I now I have to get it out of the box. And uh, I'm going to do that and come back to you in a second. So here we are, it's out of the box now. It has a plastic lid, this palette. Uh, sorry about the flashing lights, but uh, that's my roof you're looking at there. Um, it's quite solid and stiff, and you could use this for mixing area, supplementary mixing area, if you um, wanted to. But being as it's plastic, of course, you might get a certain amount of beading. But in any case, it's an absolutely um, excellent dustproof, airproof uh, cover to stop your paints from drying out, if that's what you want. You could also probably put a bit of... Um, foam tape around the edges to make an absolute seal. So that's a, a really good thing. Uh, and this is the palette. It seems to me to be a copy of the Stephen Quiller um, palette, the Jack Richardson make uh, this. It's been around for ages and I've always wanted one. I've always thought um, that would be a fabulous thing to have in a studio. It's obviously not something for traveling with hardly. It weighs, what does it say on the box? Seven and a half pounds. Ugh. It's very heavy. It's never going to move once it's on your table. It's there for, for good. Um, that for a lot of people, of course, would be inconvenient. But for um, watercolorists who paint in a studio or in a permanent location, will find this really useful, I think. It's got lots of space in the middle for mixing. And I think it's got 24 spaces around here in the circle, plus these additional eight. So it takes a lot of different colors. Um, I, I was sort of thinking I ought to be loyal to um, Meden and fill it with their paints, shouldn't I? Um, because it's a Meden palette. So I don't know, really. I sort of think, well, you kind of, this is the Meaden set, which I really like. Um, yes. So I could do that. Uh, well, yes, why don't I? I don't know what to paint at the moment. I'm in a bit of a block. You know how we are. We're always blocked one way or another. Something happens. And... Um, I, I, I'm not going to tell you the things that have been going on here in Brittany lately because I don't want to depress people, but it has been very hard the last couple of days. Um, so anyway, I'm going to put these out. That is lemon yellow. This is pale yellow. And um, this is a good selection of colours. Um, you can't really go wrong with this palette. This one is gamboge yellow. And uh, so three yellows, you've got um, an acidic yellow. This is more like a lemon. This is a mid-range, more like a cadmium yellow, really. Although I don't suppose it is really cadmium. And this one is veering towards the, the warmer side of the spectrum. Um, so those three colors, beautiful for painting things like daffodils and so on. Then we have yellow ochre which um, I wanted to just mention, somebody asked me um, the other day how to achieve a pale um, color like ivory or something like that. And what she needed was to mix yellow ochre with white. And um, so I told her that and she said, perfect. This is orange and orange yellow, they call it. I've become quite fond of orange recently for some of the art that I've been doing, if you can call it art. Um, nice and bright. This is scarlet. And I think I should be able to come up with a quote from 
Gone with the Wind, but I'm failing because, ouch, oh, I've never seen that film. Vermilion, I'm going to have to clean my tubes. What happens is you get paint stuck in the, um, in the, the thing that goes around the top of the tube. What do you call that? Anyway, you get paint stuck in there. So when you put the lid back on and it starts to dry, it seals permanently. So that one doesn't have so much paint there and I can still open it. So what I should do is I should sit down when I don't feel like painting and I should just go through all of these and clean them. But that's not as easy as it sounds because um, you end up getting in a terrible mess. So these are the reds, nice reds there. Keep going, keep going. This is blue. I think that might be cerulean. A uh, good colour for the sky anyway, that one probably would be. Is it cerulean? Yes, it is. Sky blue, doesn't look like my sky. Sky's grey here. Uh, cobalt blue, that's my favourite blue. Somewhere between ultramarine and cerulean, I think. I don't know if that's true. I'm just making it up. This is going to be ultramarine. Um, I still stand by what I said when I first started using these Meaden paints, that for the price, they are very good for practice painting, for children, for learning, for sorting out um, sketches, for filling sketchbooks, for anything that's not going to be painted for posterity, because I don't know how long um, they remain colour fast, although they say they will remain colour fast. Um, but, you know, to be quite honest, I don't paint for posterity. I'm thinking one day soon I'm going to start destroying my art. I always used to think people who did that must be completely insane. Um, but I'm, I'm beginning to think now that it would just be a good thing to do because uh, who wants to leave a house full of garbage behind them? Nobody. Well, some people do. I wouldn't. Um, it's very difficult though, isn't it, to know what you're going to get rid of first. Culling. First thing to go. I don't know. Well, we've gone through the greens now and now we're on to the purples. This is Violet. Hello, Violet. How are you? I'm a bit blue, actually, but never mind. And here is a brilliant purple. That's brilliant purple. Oh dear, I don't like this time of year. We've got big problems with grass pollen here and everybody's allergic and my ears have blocked up. So if I sound like a miserable old cow, don't be surprised because at the moment I am, I'm surviving on six hours a night sleep, which is not enough because we've got a senile dog who wakes me up at five o'clock in the morning. And if I wanted to be woken up at five o'clock in the morning, I would adopt a child. I don't see why I should have to get up that early for anyone, especially not a dog. My husband's gone off on business to Egypt, and so me and Tamsin are on our own dealing with everything. So if I sound like a miserable old cow, don't be surprised. As I said, I'm repeating myself. Maybe I'm going to see now, perhaps I need to go and see the vet. Anyway, that is the paint now in place. And um, I think I probably should have a go at testing out the surface of this mixing area. Um, that means that's a space for everything. I didn't put any white out, did I? Why didn't I do that? Because this fits the Meaden set perfectly. There we are. Uh, right, so let's find a brush. Any old brush will do, and let's see what happens if I pick up a little bit of red. Yes, now that's that's great, isn't it? Because that's a big difference between that and if you were to do it on plastic, if you were to pick up some paint and go onto plastic, you have this uh, contraction thing going on where it's not too bad on this one, actually. There are worse. Uh, this plastic is, yeah, it's, it's doing doing that thing, it's quite interesting thing that it does, shrinking. 
Yeah. Um, so that's what that does, but it doesn't do that here. So you're you're good to go, as they say in all the best videos, good to go. Now, what am I going to paint? I don't know. Let's pick up some ultramarine blue and see what happens. Should get a nice muddy colour there. It looks like dirt in the garden. Good way to start the day. Okay, well, I'm going to cut the video here, clean the palette and come back and paint something. What do you think? Okay, so like I said, I am blocked today. Um, I've been watching other artists and I'm embarrassed and I don't know what to do, really. Either I'm not as good as other people or I'm better than other people. And either way, um, it makes you think, I don't know what to do now. Um, I think this happens to everybody in many different fields, you know. I mean, you might go and have a lovely meal somewhere in a restaurant and then afterwards think I can never cook again because um, I can't cook as good as that. Uh, stuff like that, you know, this is what happens to us. Anyway, I can't get started, so I have a thought. I've got a piece of just sketch paper here and a tin of watercolour pencils, and I'm just going to scribble. Okay, I'm going to put those there, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm just literally, if I don't put something on paper at some point, I don't know, I'm not going to try and do anything. I'm just going to scribble as if I was two, not even five. I've not got my five-year-old hat on today. I've got my two-year-old hat on. And I'm not going to try and think about what I'm doing or why. I'm not going to think about colour. I'm just going to go like this. And I don't care if I'm wasting materials. Who gives a tinkers? And I am just literally going to do this because I think I might actually be suffering a little bit from suppressed anger. What do you think? You know, like the title to this video is why you don't want to watch this video. Well, <laughs> maybe you've gone away by now, but we, we are allowed sometimes to be real. And there's a lot of very bad real stuff going on at the moment around here and uh, doesn't directly affect me, but evidently I need to get something out of myself. I don't know what colours these are. I'm going to put water on here in a second because my curiosity is going to get the better of me. All of these look like black, don't they? And it's going to go mush and smush when I do. But I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take a big brush and I'm just going to literally wet it. And let the frustration happen. So there we are. I'm going to now put that to one side, let that dry and say, well, thank goodness I've actually managed to do something today. Okay, pencils, you may, you are excused. Right, what shall I do? I'm going to do some um, painting now. I've put the camera on um, its panoramic mode, or whatever you want to call it, as 0.5 instead of 1, um, so that you can see the whole uh, uh, thing, the palette and the piece of paper. And I'm going to pick up colours from my new ceramic Stephen Quiller copycat palette and I'm just going to, I don't know, going to paint lines and see where this takes us. I think I'm going to sit down. I'm not going to wash the brush in between. I'm just going to go from one colour to the next and reasonably quickly. And look at that, how bright that is. It's going to get brighter still when I add this red. Am I going to add that red? Maybe I'm not. 
Maybe that's going to ruin it. Perhaps I actually need to think. What's this colour? That's black. Don't want that. What's this? Brown. That'll do. So what I'm doing this for, I suppose, is to try out these colours. So if, if you get a new set of paints, you might want to do something like this. Swatching in straight lines and everything is, is fine, isn't it? But it can be a little bit boring. So this at least gives you an opportunity to sort of see um, colours um, kind of, you know, uh, blending or contradicting one another. And if you and then you'll get these mixtures where you mix. Oh, hello, here's Violet. Are you feeling a bit blue today, Violet? Violet's feeling a bit blue. And uh, let's put a little bit of red in now into the violet because violet's a bit blue. Let's make it a bit warmer. And that's a nice brown. Okay, let's go back to the yellows a little bit. I was watching a video this morning when I came to the studio um, before I got started with the moaning, I was watching a video by someone called Helen Wells. Um, she's an artist with a capital A. I heartily recommend that you go and have a look at some of her uh, stuff. She's incredibly talented, um, real artist. She's abstract and acrylic uh, painter, but um, well, there's no but about it. I'm sure she could paint watercolour if she wanted to. Um, her work's kind of abstract, but very, very lovely. And she's got some courses and things on offer. We're thinking of doing that, maybe um, having some uh, courses separate from what we do on YouTube. We won't, I'm not going to stop doing YouTube, don't worry. Some people are, I think. YouTube's changing and um, it's not going to be completely evident where, where it's going to take us. Those of us who have been doing this now for three years and it's not long, I'm not implying that I've been doing this for long. I haven't. Nowhere near as long as some people. I'm going to come in now and let these blend. I'm going to come in. Am I, have I been outside? I don't think I have been outside. Uh, but anyway, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Let's put some, shall we put a couple of blues in round and about? I love the way turquoise blends with the other end of the scale, you know, the um, the browns and the red reds and so on. It gives this really nice grey. So if you're not confident about um, colour mixing, this is a good thing to try out. Something like this and you'll surprise yourself with the different colours that you can make. Um, I watched also somebody doing something with, I think, just two colours and showing that you can get like dozens of different shades by just mixing two colours. Um, okay, let's put some of this blue in here. Yeah, 
What was I saying? Helen Wells, yeah, go and give her a look. Sign up to her, subscribe to her. She's not got very many subscribers on here. And although she gets reasonably good views, but she's very good. And you can learn a lot from watching her techniques and her process and listening to what she says about um, what art is about why we do it, why she does it, how she does it, dealing with the issues that crop up, like not having the foggiest idea why you do it. We asked that question, I think Tamsin put up a question on Instagram, uh, asking people why, 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 why do they paint? It's very thought provoking, isn't it? Why do we? And it's not surprising really that we often stop. People get blocked completely. I, I One of my problems is um, was until I started the channel, um, my husband, I don't think he understands why people, why women, men as well, of course, but why we need to do something that they consider to be pointless. You know, he understands why I might want to sew because that's handy when he needs his trousers taken up. But why would I want to dab paint onto a piece of paper? Wouldn't it be more productive to paint it on, put, dab it onto the wall? You know, kitchen needs painting. So, yeah. So, the question is now what? I think I'm going to let that dry and then come back and see what I think. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this sheet from here. block so it was glued all the way around so I'll take that off of there and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically cut this in half just a sec I need a knife a knife a knife I'm going to cut it in half past curve because um, I'm going to try out more than one. I'm not necessarily all going to do this all on one video, but I'm going to cut it in half because that's 36, so that's 18. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I've got two that I can work with and I don't feel quite so what's the word, intimidated by the whole size. In fact, I'll tell you what else I'm going to do, just, just because I'm going to trim it a bit. You know how often people, um, they do the big reveal where they take the tape off at the end and say, oh, look how wonderful this is now. I've taken the tape off around the outside edges. Well, I've just taken off the, the scattered edges of this piece of uh, practice work here. And I'm going to now go back to the other side so that we can see that a bit more closer up. Okay, so, you know, whatever. Let's grab a pen. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. I'll tell you what it is, though. It's a Tombow 
a brush pen black. Let us do something. Do what? Fill some spaces. Calm the beast. I was listening to somebody today talking about um, a certain kind. I can't remember who this person was now, I'm afraid. but uh, And I can't remember any of the names. But apparently somebody invented something a bit like neurographic art in the 1940s. Um, you know, neurographic art where you draw a line and then you draw another line. And where the lines cross, you sort of soften the join like that until you have a whole page full of things like that. This person way back then, what he did, he looked at a piece of paper and wherever he saw an imperfection, he did a dot like that, a dot, right? I can't remember what he called it. Um, so he just looked at a blank sheet of paper. And maybe in those days, in the 1940s, a lot of paper had lots of marks on it. Then having done that, he just joined them up. And he called that something. I'll have to look it up again. Anyway, so it's, it's like that. And it's quite interesting thought, isn't it? So, so we could do that here. Because, you know, I'm serious about a lot of things. But one thing I'm serious about is this block this idea of a an artist's block because it's not a joke. I've mentioned this before that I very nearly sold all my art things and gave up the whole thing completely about 15 years ago. And then something happened to stop me from doing that. And I'm glad that thing happened, although that thing that happened led to a lot of other things which were not good. It did at least stop me from from getting rid of my paints and from living my life fully, you know? So to be blocked is a serious matter. And I, I'm not doing this to impress anybody. What I'm doing now is my attempt to enable me to come back to the studio tomorrow because our air conditioning has broken and um, so I'm only able to paint in the morning. So that's another limitation. Air conditioning's broken in, husband is in Egypt, can't fix it, temperature is predicted to be quite high. So I'm rambling on here, telling you the truth, which is that I am not, I'm not willing to allow myself to be blocked. So I have to do something and I have to paint a video because that's the way this works. So I'm sharing it with you and hoping that maybe it might help you too. Those of you who don't suffer from Painter's block or gifted. You have to take your eyes away from what you're doing and just decide to do something and then just do it. And don't think, oh, it's not going to work out because you know full well you get halfway through it and it turns into an adolescent with pimples and you say, this is never going to be any good. Well, who cares? What does good mean anyway? Don't make judgments of your own work or indeed anybody else's. And that's hard.
I'm literally just allowing my pen to do the work here. I thought I was going to do a lot of these circles and, and lines, but I, I don't like what I did there at all. So I'm going to paint over that. I often do this. I do often do something like that. I paint, I, I draw something and afterwards I think, oh no, wrong. Okay, so at least you can go over it. Or you can if you can find a dark enough colour. Okay. So we'll just finish off up here. This needs to go up a bit further, I think. I wonder how many people have got bored by now and have left the channel, probably unsubscribed. Are you thinking about that? Are you going to say, oh, I can't bear it anymore. I can't put up with her rabbiting on about nothing in that stupid English accent. I wonder how many people think that. Occasionally when I do a really, what I think is decent, halfway decent painting, um, the first thing that happens on YouTube is that a dozen people unsubscribe from the channel and you think to yourself, oh, okay. So that's what I get when I think I've done something halfway decent. Oh, well, I'll try less hard next time. They've done some work recently, a few years ago, I think it was, on allergies, and they've discovered that people who are depressive types suffer from allergies, or to put it another way, allergies perhaps cause depression. I think the research was being done in, in Germany. I don't know. You can't trust anything you read on online anymore. Okay, so I've got lots of lines there now, and um, I think I'm going to open up my tin of gold. Oh, I wish it was. That would be good, wouldn't it? And let's take a slightly smaller brush, and I'm just going to paint some. and some bronze. I wet these earlier. Um, the paints so that they're reasonably soft. This is a set of Etcher gold um, colors. I'm just going around the outsides of these dark ones, sort of blending the colours, not really trying to. Keep anything systematic, anything like that. Something to think about songs. Just another brick in the wall. Remember that one? I 
And as you, as you, you know, do this, you probably, with any luck, will find yourself calming down a bit. With any luck. Okay. covering up some of the dots and some of the lines. But mostly covering up the white space, I think. Somebody um, uh, said that they got the feeling with the when we did the the live premiere the other day. She said that uh, she got the feeling that I was just doing the painting as quickly as I possibly could, and it was very bad, and that uh, it was a case of uh, get it done as quickly as possible, job done. Um, She's wrong, or he, I don't know who it was. It's not like that. I'm, I don't paint slowly. I'm not a, um, I don't plan things in advance. I am not a shade of Campbell. I don't paint like that. I, um, whatever it is that I do, I do it with my full concentration, which is one of the reasons why you get blocked when you can't concentrate. Anyway, I thought that was a bit harsh. But I'm not complaining because that's what happens. Good old YouTube. Just delete. Click delete. No one else will have seen the comment. So I, this is not going anywhere. Don't don't be excited at the thought that uh, well, scoot ahead to the end because um, I don't know what's going to happen, but you can tell, you know, because you can go ahead in time. I can't. I don't know where this is going to go. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't matter. Use up some of the paint that I've got sitting in the drawer. So we looked at the palette, didn't we? The nice big Meaden uh, ceramic studio palette. And uh, I, I can recommend that if you're in the market for a big one. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's a good palette. Very heavy, seven and a half pounds. Costs around about $50, shipping included.
Okay. Ah. Leave it there. Right, well, I've managed to cover the whole of the paper there. What do you think? I think it's only half done. I think it needs to be dried and uh, then worked on a bit more. Okay, so I've made a photocopy of the, um, the piece and I'm going to try out some ideas on here um, because I don't, well, because I think that's a, a good way of proceeding. And um, this way we can see uh, whether it's worth doing anything with it at all or whether this is just a, you know, one of those things. And it's probably just one of those things. But, uh, yeah, so it's fun. I'm beginning to have fun and beginning to get back some confidence. Also beginning to feel hungry. Um, so, yes. I like these pens, don't you? Have you got one, a Tombow uh, brush pen? You can get very small and very large dots. Let's see, you can go very, very small. Or you can do quite big ones. I'm just going to reinstate some of these circles that have got partially covered over. See whether that improves things, whether it's fun to do. And where the lines have broken, I sort of thought, oh, I can put a spiral in there as if uh, something was hiding behind. Because they, they do, these lines, they kind of look like they're going behind. They yeah. are. I've put the fan on. If you can hear that in the background, that's the fan. Because it's going to get hot in here. Um, I like spirals, don't you? I like to be able to press hard and not so hard and get these nice wide lines. Make my joins a bit bigger. It's like a network of railway, you know, trains or something. A train leaving from platform 13 is for Maidstone East, Maidstone West. Yeah, that's kind of makes sense to make these. A little bit bigger. wrong because that was a neurographic ex example yeah that's better Put that small one there okay maybe a few more white um spirally things And I'm going to stop in a minute because I'm hungry. This is not a work of art. This is just me trying to defeat painter's block. I hope it is helpful for you to see uh, yet another artist, artist <laughs> struggling with uh, the situation they find themselves in.
and trying to get out of it. So hopefully you benefited from this in some small way, enough to remain a subscriber if you are a subscriber. And don't unsubscribe, please. Um, take a look at our website, diananton.com. We have lots of free sketches on there from all the paintings that I've done over the last couple of years. If you want to paint birds and animals, there's loads and loads of uh, sketches of things for you to do and all the instructions are there of course as well on the videos and uh, we've got 750 videos at least so um, plenty of scope so from those days when I am not feeling blocked and I can happily sit down and paint a fish or a cat or a dog or a bird or a house or a landscape or a tree or any of those figurative things, then there are days when you can't, so you do this. And in trying to let inspiration work through you, trying, not trying too hard though, just You know, whatever. Anyway, that's enough for now. I'll let you go. I'll see you again soon. And uh, hopefully um, you have a great day. So bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye. So this is the painting finished. I've embellished the actual original now, having uh, tried it all out on the photocopy. And this is uh, the other half of the painting that I cut off in the first place. And uh, I, on the next day, I went in and embellished that. So I ended up with this leaf motif and these other uh, berries and things like that. And uh, yeah, so two completely different results from one background.